Okay, in this last section on coatings, I'm going to talk about the other types of coatings that, that weren't covered in the first section. Uh, so tissue interaction coatings, mainly and antibacterial, antithrombotic coatings. Uh, so we'll just have a look at the roundup of coatings again. I covered hydrophilic, hydrophobic in the, in the last uh, video and drug releasing. So I'm going to focus on antibacterial and tissue interaction coatings now. Oh, antibacterial coatings, these are uh, where pharmacologically active pre-incorporated antibacterial agents or compounds uh, are embedded into a coating. Uh, the compounds could be antibiotics, antiseptics, metal ions or organic molecules. And they can achieve their antibacterial activity by either contact killing. So the, the, the bacteria comes in contact with the coating and it kills instantly. Or they could be drug eluting where they're eluting some sort of antibiotic or, um, or chemotherapy agent. So antibacterial surface technologies can employ metals and the, and the most common ones that we hear about are silver, zinc and copper. Uh, and, you know, there, there's increasing uh, research in embedding little particles of copper in medical devices, which you wouldn't have thought about 10 years ago because copper was a bad word and it was an absolute no-no. But I think people are realizing that small quantities uh, have good antibacterial properties, uh, but small enough not to cause toxicity. So we'll, we'll see where this research goes. Um, so non-metal elements can also be used to iodine, selenium, selenium, and then organic substances such as antibiotics, anti-infective peptides, uh, chitosan, which is a polysaccharide, which is very antibacterial, um, or other antibacterial substances and their combinations. Um, so how these are, are typically coated, they're usually embedded in a biodegradable polymer or a sol gel coating, and, uh, and this allows controlled release of the uh, agent, such as the antibiotic, um, to, to cells. Okay. Uh, otherwise, uh, there could be little metal, zinc, copper, uh, silver ions embedded onto the implant. So the other type of coatings were tissue interaction coatings. Um, and the idea behind these is that uh, if you want um, tissue to integrate into the implant, um, this is a prerequisite for success, then the implant should mimic the natural tissue as much as possible. Um, so there is a, um, a number of coatings, such as hydroxyapatite, which is a mineral found in bone, a collagen, there's an N missing there, collagen, and a porous titanium that are known to um, induce bone formation in, uh, in implants, in, in prosthetic implants, but also conduct bone formation. So they're osteoconductive and osteoinductive. So they not only signal for bone cells to uh, infiltrate into the device, but they also conduct the formation of, of bone in and around the, the device. And it's known that early integration of bone to prosthetic implants reduces the likelihood of infection. So, uh, as, uh, as I have mentioned in, in previous slides, uh, there are a number of prosthetic implants that use uh, porous titanium. Some of them hi have hydroxyapatite embedded on them. Uh, some of them are antibiotic loaded. Um, some of them would have collagen coatings. So how these coatings are applied, uh, in the case of metal uh, powders, um, sintering could be uh, an option, which we just spoke about in a previous video, where um, the powder particles are heated to uh, just below their melting temperature, so they fuse together and they fuse to the device. Uh, so it gives a rough surface finish, which cells like to grow on, cells like a rough surface finish. Um, and they will integrate more readily to a rough surface than a smooth surface. Um, or physical de vapor deposition uh, can be done by ion implantation or plasma spraying, which we'll have a look at now. So ion implantation, what happens here is an ion source of metal ions uh, are produced. Um, these uh, flow through a separation magnet and they accelerate um, electrostatically, 
so they're hooked up to a voltage supply and an electrostatic uh, force draws the ions um, to the substrate over here and the ions embed into the substrate so they bombard it and they embed into it each ion is typically a single atom or a molecule so the amount of material implanted is integral over time of the ion current so plasma spraying then is a technology closely associated with powdered metal uh, technology uh, plasma related to metals is an electrically conductive gas consisting of, consisting of positive ions and free negative electrons formed at very high temperatures so what happens in a plasma spray device an arc is formed between two electrodes in a plasma forming gas and the gas um, consists of argon hydrogen or argon helium as the plasma gas is heated by the arc it expands and it's accelerated through a shaped nozzle um, so the gas as i said will consist of ions and free negative electrons as this gas is heated through the um, arc that's formed between the two electrodes it expands and it accelerates so we'll just have a look at that um, so we see that the plasma arc here and the plasma jet uh, which is accelerating um, through the um, anode here okay and it hits the material um, and powder particles fuse to the material okay so that concludes the coatings um, to do with antibacterial uh, anti um, thrombotic and tissue interaction coatings and typically how they might be coated onto a uh, metallic medical device. Thank you.